Hello everyone, I am Demented Kirby, and welcome to my channel, The Commander Tavern. The Commander Tavern is a channel dedicated to my favorite Magic the Gathering format. The Brewery is a series on this channel showcasing my spicy brews and other deck techs. On this episode of The Brewery, I'll be discussing my take on a Rule Zero Commander from Mystery Booster 2, Rusko Clockmaker. If you like this deck or any of the cards I'll be mentioning throughout the video, please consider using my TCG Player affiliate link when purchasing those cards. You can find that link down in the description. It'll really help out the channel and looks a cost to you. But the very best way you can help support the channel is with my Patreon. There are plenty of perks for being a patron such as early access to certain videos, exclusive deck text, gifts, and more for as little as $1. You could also become a channel member for just $0.99. Cents. Show off your support with a logo next to your name and exclusive emojis. Or you can always just support my channel for free by simply liking, subscribing, and sharing which also helps out a lot. I put out a video every Monday so you don't want to miss out. You can join my Discord server for free if you want to join the Commander Tavern community. All pertinent links are down in the description. Alright, let's get back to the episode. Rusko is a 3-3 human artificer for 2 generic, 1 blue and 1 black. Since the card has an acorn stamp at the bottom, it is not legal for constructed formats. However, if your playgroup allows it, you can use it as your commander. I build this deck with no other illegal cards in order to ease the process. However, if you're already playing illegal cards with your playgroup, they'll already have expectations. But i found that it's easier to get permission if just limited to one card that's easily identifiable. Alright, with that discretion clarified, let's continue with what Rusko actually does. This previously digitally exclusive card conjures a card named Midnight Clock onto the battlefield. This is not a token, but an actual card. There are many ways to solve this conundrum, such as using actual copies of Midnight Clock that you will just will into existence whenever it enters the battlefield, or even with pieces of paper that you can stick to basic lands, put into sleeves, etc. Your imagination is the limit to how to work around it. In this sense, it's similar to cards like Bone Rattler that require you to do something similar. Interestingly, from Mystery Booster 1. I love these types of effects that push the boundaries of what's possible in Magic the Gathering, so I will always welcome them. It's why so many playtest cards and uncards are in my commander cube. In any case, Rusko doesn't just conjure a mana rock when entering the battlefield. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. This is already a great ability for storm decks, zero costed artifact decks, etc. However, you also put an hour counter on each midnight clock you have. When building this deck, I took it out of, to a very clear direction. Conjure as many copies of Midnight Clock as possible. Unfortunately, this did not allow for a Battle of Wits potential win con, since you'd need 200 cards in your library at the beginning of your upkeep. You'd need over 100 copies of Midnight Clock for that one. You'd want Clear the Loon for a Battle of Wits win in Commander. That being said, there's still some spice to be had with Risco. So let's see. First order of business is blinking him. To that end, the deck is running Essence Flux, Planner Incision, Sirens Bruise, Blur, Displace, Ghostly Flicker, and Illusionist Stratagem. Not only can these be used at assist speed to protect Rusko from spot removal, but are mostly used at the end of the turn before hours to get another Midnight Clock. Additionally, some of these also blink an additional creature or even an artifact to protect another key piece or a Midnight Clock from getting blown up. Or to blink a clock in response to its final ability, but more on that later. Not only that, but these spells also trigger Risco when cast, making them some of the best cards in the deck. Nephalia Smuggler, Displacer Kitten, Thassa Deep Dwelling, and Deadeye Navigator also help blink Risco, but don't trigger him when cast. The Kitten is amazing because it will trigger way more often than not, blinking Risco multiple times in a game. However, the king here is Deadeye Navigator. Each time we conjure a Midnight Clock, that helps with paying for the ability. Each time we blink Risco twice, we're able to blink him once more. Absolute house in the deck. Thassa only blinks Rusko at the beginning of our end step, but she has the added bonus of an activated ability the clocks can pay for. If you fear getting smacked by a huge creature, tap it down in response to combat, but more on protecting ourselves from aggro decks later on in the video. Conjurer's Closet also blinks Rusko at the end of our turn just like Thassa. It doesn't really do anything else, but at least it triggers Rusko when cast. Another way to maximize Rusko's ability is by cloning him, with Sakashima of a Thousand Faces, Sakashima the Imposter, and Spark Double. Not only will they conjure a Midnight Clock when entering the battlefield as a copy of Rusko, but each time you cast a non-creature spell, you drain even more life and put even more hour counters on all your Midnight Clocks. These cards do a ton of work here. Same with Hum of the Host. Not only do we get a non-legendary copy of Rusko at the beginning of our combat step, but the copy entering will also conjure another Midnight Clock. So good. Alright, so we're creating a ton of copies of Midnight Clock, so what? Once it gets 12 counters, it exiles itself in order to Time Twister us. Well, what if it didn't get exiled? What if it got shuffled into our library instead? If you read the ability carefully, you'll see that in response to its trigger entering the stack, we still have an opportunity to either shuffle, destroy, sacrifice, bounce, etc. it in order for it to get shuffled back into our library once the ability resolves. 
To that end, the deck is running Phyrexia's Core, Clan Crafter, Ethereum Astrolabe, Car Clan Ironworks, Trading Post, and Throne of Geth as instant speed sacrifice outlets. If we sacrifice a Midnight Clock in response to its ability entering the stack, then it'll get shuffled into our library along with our hand and the rest of the cards in our library. The first one doesn't even take up a slot in the deck for being a land that can tap for mana without entering tapped. The background can serve as a way to pump Risco, which, believe it or not, provides a potential win con in the deck, more of that in a bit. The Ironworks can also give us mana in order to pay for other activated abilities, and Trading Post has other abilities that can be used depending on the situation. However, the absolute best one for this deck is Throne of Geth. This proliferates whatever we sacrifice an artifact. So not only are we recycling a triggered Midnight Clock, but we're also proliferating our counters. And not only our counters, but any plus one plus one counters on Rusko or Spark Double. While Midnight Clock gets an hour counter at the beginning of each upkeep, giving us at least four each turn around the table in a commander game, proliferating them makes the reward happen even faster. To that end, the deck is also running Karn's Bastion, Flux Channeler, Inextricable Tide, Viral Drake, Vraska Betrayal Sting, and Tekothal in Query Dominus. While Rusko already puts an hour counter on each Midnight Clock whenever we cast a non-creature spell, so will Flux Channeler, only it'll proliferate any other counter. Same with Inextricable Tide, which will trigger off of any spell we cast. So Viral Drake and Vraska also provide a potential win con in the form of poison counters that can be easily proliferated in this deck. For those grinding games we're potentially causing, we could put our opponents out of their misery even faster via Infect, just in case trading them for multiple points of life with Risco isn't fast enough. Especially Viral Drake. Since it doesn't require tapping to activate, once we have enough Midnight Clocks that can tap for blue mana, we can stick it all into its proliferate effect, adding even more poison counters. Tekotal doesn't proliferate per se, but it's incredibly easy to give it an indestructible counter thanks to our counters, and then it'll help our proliferate effects do so twice each time instead of just once. We can also win faster with our clocks thanks to Starscream, Power Hungry, and Psychosis Crawler. Keep in mind that the clocks time twister us whenever their final ability triggers. With Starscream, if we're the Monarch, we can have an opponent lose 2 life each time we draw a card. With multiple Twine Twister effects, we just killed off an opponent. It adds the Monarch to the game with its converted side that we can get if we cast him for his more than meets the eye cost. Fortunately, this has flying just like its front side, so hopefully we can steal the Monarch quickly. The Crawler doesn't need so many hoops to jump through, since it's clean and to the point, each opponent loses one life whenever we draw a card. So good. It's also a huge beater with that star star power toughness. Cranial Plating also provides a decent win con. If we have multiple clocks in play along with any other artifact, this will massively pump any of our creatures. Attached to Rusko actually provides a potential commander damage win, especially if we're tapping down blockers with Thassa or making him unblockable with Rogue's Passage. That doesn't even take up a slot in the deck considering it's just two colors anyways. It's amazing how many different ways you can win with this commander, even if I didn't include them all in this video. Since the deck is light on creatures, we are susceptible to getting aggroed out before we can secure a win via death by a thousand cuts. To that end, the deck is running propaganda, collective restraint, and cost can falls for its pillow fort effects. The goal is to have multiple of these out, but with one, it should be somewhat helpful. The last one requires tapping down a creature, but we can just tap down Rusko. The deck is also running Interaction like Go for the Throat, Infernal Grass, Power Word Kill, and Victim of Night for single creature removal, and Toxic Deluge, Damnation, in Garruk's Wake, and Plague Wind for multiple creature removal. Keep in mind that even if we use most of our interaction, we time twist to ourselves with each Midnight Clock reaching its 12th hour. So we get these shuffled back into the deck to then potentially draw into them later. Not only that, but they all trigger Risk Kill whenever cast as a nice bonus. Cyclonic Rift, Etherize, and Illusionist Gambit also help us against aggressive decks. The first two absolutely crush token decks but still protect us from horde decks in general. The last one is absolutely amazing when unexpected. Best of all, like the kill spells, we get these back from the graveyard whenever a Midnight Clock ultimates. Fierce Guardianship, an offer you can't refuse, Strict Serenade, Swan Song, Counterspell, Mana Drain, and Negate help with other spells that need to be dealt with. Naturally, blue decks be blue decks. While protecting our board isn't super important so long as a Midnight Clock is about to pop off, we do want to stop mass exile effects or graveyard hate effects or a straggler spell that can kill Rusko in case we don't have an instant speed blink effect in hand. And getting these shoveled back into our library is such a blow to the table's morale. Unlimited interaction is just so good. Mystic Sanctuary is included in case we needed any of these spells at instant speed in response to a card draw effect, of which we'll see in a moment. While we are time twistering ourselves off, then we might need a response ASAP. And what better way than fetching for this at instant speed in response to drawing a card to cover interaction. Such a pro gamer move. 
Filter Out is an amazing mass bounce effect that I love running here. It can bounce problematic artifacts and enchantments that can then get countered later on, but it could also be used to save our midnight clocks from a mass removal effect by bouncing them to our hand. Keep in mind that they are not tokens, they are conjured cards, so we can then recast them to also trigger Risco, and every three of them will help cast the next one. Speaking of helping cast the next one, Nightscape Familiar, Sapphire Medallion, Joyrus Familiar, Stone Calendar, and Defiler of Dreams will not only help reduce the cost of our Midnight Clocks from our hand, but most of the deck as well. The Defiler is especially great since we will draw a card each time we cast a blue permanent, which just so happens to be our Conjured Midnight Clocks. So long as we have it along with two of the any other cards, our Midnight Clocks will cost only two life to cast. Also, don't forget that the Familiar regenerates, which is great against any huge threat coming our way, so long as it doesn't have Trample. Now we can't just rely on our multiple Midnight Clocks to Time Twister us every now and again. We do need effective card advantage. The deck is running Call of the Ring, Phyrexian Arena, and Black Market Connections just for that. Sure, we need life for them, but we're draining the table for life with Risco, so it balances out. As a bonus, having the ring makes Risco potentially unblockable for yet another way for a potential commander damage win. The last one can also give us chump blockers or treasure in a pinch. You could also run things like Rhystic Study and Mystic Remora, but I'm so tired of seeing those cards in commander games that I've since stopped playing with them. Synergistically, Jinkataxis and Shimmer Dragon can also provide a massive bouts of card advantage. The former will trigger off of 65% of the deck's spells, but more importantly, any Midnight Clock we cast. The goal of the deck is not to transform him into a Saga side, but it's a good thing we can choose to do if we ever needed to. The Dragon is amazing here since it's essentially a 5-6 flyer with Hexproof. Best of all, we can draw a card at instant speed by tapping down two untapped artifacts. We also can't rely on the clocks for mana acceleration. The deck is running Wayfarer's Bubble and Navigation Orb along with 7 of each basic land. Since these artifacts have built-in sacrifice effects, we can time twist them back into our library and potentially draw them back later. Yes, that might seem like wishful thinking, but you'd be surprised. In any case, land-based mana acceleration is hard to deal with since players refuse running mass land destruction effects. Soul Ring is the only other mana rock in the deck. I don't even run a legit copy of Midnight Clock in the 99 of the deck. Who wouldn't love a turn 3 Risco? Come on. The rest of the deck is just the rest of the lands. Apart from all of the previously mentioned lands, the deck's running Contaminated Aquifer, Feeded Pools, Ice Tunnel, Sunken Hollow, Undercity Sewers, Watery Grave, Morphic Pool, Command Tower, and Ancient Tomb. As with all of my deck techs, you can build your mana base according to your budget. Whether you include more expensive cards or even cheaper cards is up to you. You do you. This brews just an idea of how to build around Rusko Clockmaker. Yes, this is a legendary creature with an acorn stamp. No, it is not legal to play with in Commander. However, how often will we see digitally exclusive cards finally getting printed in paper? That alone requires some form of celebration, even if it's an episode of the brewery here on the Commander Tavern. If you're interested in the decklist of this spicy brew of mine, you can find a link to it down in the description. I would like to thank all my patrons for supporting me, and a quick shout out to all my higher tier patrons, the brewers, for their patronage. I'd also like to thank anyone using my TCG Player affiliate link. That also helps out the channel. I also want to thank any channel members. Your membership is greatly appreciated. And to everyone, thanks for watching this episode of the Brewery on the Commander Tavern. I am the Meded Kirby, and happy brewing.